By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Raging Bull series. This is episode number four from this tournament. We are still in the Swiss rounds. We're going to look at a match between Ervin, who's playing a four color good stuff deck because he's not playing any green, so it's not five color. And he's taking on Dawa, who is playing mono green. So this is really an interesting matchup, two different strategies going head to head. So I'm looking forward to look at this match. Of course, I will do a little deck tech beforehand. Before I do that though, I would first like to point out that if you want to know more about this tournament, the rule set, whatnot, please check the description below because there you can find all the information you want about this match. And what you can also find in the description below is a series of timestamps. I know some people enjoy skipping the deck deck, looking at that after the match. The easiest way to do that is by uh, taking a look at the timestamp. Uh, stamps, I should say plural. One of those timestamps is MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the action, the match between Dawa and Erwin. But first, I am going to start with the deck decks. I have beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Erwin, four color, good stuff. And here we see the deck of Erwin. So this is what I call a good stuff deck. And maybe you're wondering, what is a good stuff deck? Well, the name already kind of implies what it is. What you do is, you look at the colors in Magic, you take the best cards and you put them together. You take out all the good stuff, the staples, um, the restricted cards, the power cards, you put them together and then you get usually a very powerful deck. And I think that's exactly what happened here, right? We see all the power cards, we see the Moxon, we see the Black Splash for Mind Twist and uh, Demonic Tutor. We see that he's playing red. He's not playing Wheel of Fortune, but he's playing red really for the direct damage. So three bolts and a uh, fireball. Now, what's so, what's so nice about this red splash, by the way, is that you only need a single red. So it's quite easy to achieve that. And then you've got access to fireball, which is a great extra win con. You've got access to your bolts, which is great in a combat situation, but also to finish an opponent off. I mean, one red, three damage, any target instant speed. Insane. Do I need to say more? And then, of course, you've got, you know, the blue power. Again, it's so easy to splash, guys. Ancestral Recall, one blue. Time Twister, uh, Time Walk. Oh, Time Twister's not in here, actually, but Time Walk just for one blue and one. So a good stuff deck is really looking at the best options in the game and put that in. And I guess what's interesting here is that Erwin has chosen not to go with Regrowth. Regrowth, of course, being a really good card, only one green to cast, but then you do need that green mana. And I guess he chose not to put it in, having a lot of other options here at his disposal. I think if you're looking at the whole deck picture, you can see white is kind of the main color. And so it makes sense that he's choosing to play with Sarah Angel, which is a card where you actually need two white for in the casting cost, but it's kind of easy for him to achieve that also because he's got, of course, the Mox Pearl and he also has the Black Lotus to help him out. I think what's interesting here is that he's also chosen to go for three counter spells. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning that is because counter spell, of course, is a double blue, right? He's got two counter spells and a mana drain. So you kind of want to have double blue pretty regularly in the game. Um, and then when we look at the mana base, we can see he's got quite a lot of blue mana sources, right? He's got a basic island, which is probably against Blood Moon, right? He's got a basic island, basic plane against Blood Moon. Then he's playing with uh, the Taigas, the Volcanic Islands, uh, sorry, the Tundras, not the Taigas, the Tundras. Uh, the Volcanic Islands, the Underground Sea. So he's got quite a lot of uh, uh, blue sources to reach the double blue. And also he's got quite a lot of white sources. So I think the mana base is actually maybe even the most interesting part of these type of decks. Like how are you going to make sure that you've got enough mana? How are you going to handle a potential Blood Moon? He's not going to see a Blood Moon in this match, but it is of course always a weak spot with these good stuff decks because you were playing all those colors so it's kind of tricky. Usually what I say to people who kind of rely on Blood Moons against these type of decks, I always advise them to also play with some form of artifact removal because you want to take care um, you know, of those mocks and of those uh, Black Lotus preferably because that's of course another great source for these type of players to get the mana they need. And what I also really like, by the way, about Black Lotus, and I'm a little bit jealous here, Erwin, because I don't have a Black Lotus, is that Black Lotus is so great when you play counter magic. You just you just put that Black Lotus out there and you say, you know, it's there, it's untapped, I'm not doing anything, you know, you just pass the turn, it's fine, you know, and then you've, you've got, maybe you have counter magic, maybe not, but the Black Lotus always gives you access to that crucial counter spell, you know, and a counter spell can, can win you games, you know, it's proven, it can win you games. Uh, also, of course, a Black Lotus is great with that horrible black card, Mind Twist. Ooh, 
Um, anyway, it is a super strong deck. I think in this matchup, Erwin is the favorite. But then again, he is playing against the mono green deck that's looking pretty tough. So let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Dower. And here we see the deck of Dawa. So this is mono green. And what I like about mono green is there are so many different lists. Like there's not, especially lately, I've been checking out so many mono green lists and they're all different. They're all different. And this one, for example, doesn't have Urnim Jin, which is great because a lot of people play City in Abolo. So I guess that's the main reason why he's not playing with it. Um, it play, plays with Tracker, which is a card you hardly ever see in these lists. It's a super interesting card. It's one green, two, a two, two from the dark. Two green and tap, and it fights another creature. And I remember it's just a 2 2. So I guess that's why he's playing with Wailuli Wolf. With Wailuli Wolf, you can give it, of course, plus one, plus one to any creatures. So you can make your tracker 3 3 kill the Savannah Lines of Erwin, for example. Uh, of course, you can also use this in combination of um, of your Giant Grove. Make it a 5 5. Make it fight with the Sarah Angel. Kill a Sarah Angel. So I'm actually really excited about tracker. I'm curious to see how it's going to do. Um, what I also like in this deck are the four Berserks. He's playing four Berserks. And that actually makes his Wailuli Wolves better as well. Because a Berserk, when you play it on a creature and if it's attacking, it doubles its power. So that means that plus one plus one basically becomes that one power that you're giving extra to your creature. You can count that double because of a potential Berserk, right? So it makes Wailuli Wolves slightly better. I also like the fact that when you play these decks you kind of have to go all in, right? You cannot hold back. You got to just start attacking right from the start. And I think that's what Dao is going to do. And in that, if you keep that in mind, that like aggressive mindset of this deck, I also like the inclusion of the two Maces of If, because a Mace of If is a great way to just attack with your whole army and uh, protect the creatures that, that have unfavorable blocks. You know, for example, you attack with two Lunarware Elves, your opponent has, I don't know, a Mistress Factory to block one of those. Just use your Maze of If to take your Lanawar Elf out of combat and the other Elf still deals damage, it's unblocked. You can put a Grove on it, you can put a Berserk on it, you can just deal a lot of damage out of nowhere. Maybe you can first use your uh, uh, Save Haven, which three Save Havens in this deck, by the way, which is great. I mean, this deck is super explosive. The reason why I think Erwin is a strong favorite here in Naldawa is simply the fact that Erwin also has a quick game plan. You know, he's got Savannah Lions, he's got Lightning Bolt, but he also has a lot of mana acceleration in his deck. You know, he's got all the Moxen he needs except the green one, I think. He's got the, um, of course, the Black Lotus. So it's going to be really tough for Dao to kind of outrun Erwin. And I think that's what Dao wants to do with this deck. You want to outrun your opponent and you want to put in so much damage in the first couple of turns that your opponent doesn't really have a chance to start casting the bigger stuff like Suchi and Sarah Angel. Um, but like I said, I think because of Erwin's mana, mana acceleration, it's going to be really tough for Dao to kind of win that tempo game, even though he is playing with, of course, four Ice Storms as well. We know that by now the Lanora Elf turn one, turn two Ice Storm is a very good play, but I think it's a little bit too cute against the deck of Erwin, in, in my opinion. That being said, I've seen green, mono green decks reach finals. And I think a mono green deck, it looks simple, but there are so many different results with different players. It really depends on the player, how good the deck actually is. Wow, that's a statement, Timmy. Are you saying that it's important that the player knows how to play magic? Oh, sorry, guys. I'm just I'm just rambling on today. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of Dao. We've already looked at the deck of Erwin. That means we're ready. Let's go to the Raging Bull match between Dawa and Erwin. Game number one. Here we go. We have Erwin sitting on the right with his four color good stuff deck. It looks like he's taken a mulligan here, selecting cards to put on the bottom of his library. And we have Dawa on the left with this mono green deck. Look at that. He's taken a double mulligan. It has to start with five cards. He's also on the play. Starting with the Tundra and a Mox Pearl. So this is a possibility for Dawa. Who is starting with a forest? There is a crumble. That is very, very good. Slowing down Aaron. So he's losing his mox. This is good news for Dawa, of course. That double mole for Aaron really gives him possibilities there. There is the plateau in a pass. There's the green. Now he can play out his 1 1 flyer, his dragonfly. There we go, playing out the Dragonfly and a pass turn. So I wonder if Erwin is gonna, you know, maybe be aggressive, just put a bolt on there or 
Maybe a Swords? Ooh, there's a Savannah. Lion's in hand. What else is there in hand? It's hard to see. Only three cards anymore. And uh, there was a Suchi there as well, I believe. Passing turn here. Dao of finding another land. Now he can play an Ice Storm. I would probably take care of the uh, Plateau. He could also, of course, play another creature. He's got two Ice Storms in hand. First, there's the attack for one. That means Aaron's going to drop to 19. And there is, I think, an Ice Storm. Now he has to decide what land he's going to take care of. Of course, he could also do the Tundra because it's blue. Going there for the Tundra, trying to cut him off from any blue magic. Of course, Dawa knows that, you know, Erwin needs to draw some cards so like an Ancestral Recall can really get him back into the game. So I kind of understand the situation from there, or the decision, I mean, from that perspective. An attack here for two, Dawa dropping to 18. There is a Mishra's Factory and a pass. He's got that other Ice Storm in hand now as well. There is a Pendlehaven, so he can attack for two. He could play an Ice Storm on the Mishra's Factory, for example. Yes, that's exactly what he does. Must be a difficult decision, though, because it's, it's tempting as well to still play it on one of the two other lands. And dealing two damage now because of that Pendlehaven. So making his Dragonfly into 2-3 Flyer. So we see Arvin dropping to 17. He's probably just going to attack again with the Lion. What else can he do? I believe he's got a Suchi in hand. And okay, there's a Strip Mine. That's something. He could strip the Pendlehaven, which is actually pretty good. I'm a little surprised he didn't do it straight away. You know, strip the Pendle because that's going to cost him an extra point of damage. Or not. Yes, it is. He's pumping into 2-3, attacking, so Erwin dropping to 15. There is the Scavenger Folk, a card from the Dark 1-1 one, one creature. You can pay one green tap, sacrifice the Scavenger Folk to destroy target artifact. There we see a City of Brass on the side of Erwin. An attack for 2. Again, so that line is doing some work. But I don't think Dawa really minds. And again, it's hard to kind of see the cards there in hand. Now he strips the Pendlehaven by Erwin. So Erwin only has two cards in hand. Three cards for Dawa after draw. Now he's got two again, finding another Pendlehaven. That's unfortunate here for Erwin after taking care of that one. He can just attack now, deal three points of damage. Or does he have a better option? I believe he's got a Berserk in hand, but with Berserk, you really want to have a Giant Grove or some other pump spell. There's the attack again. Of course, he can make his Dragonfly, for example, a 2, and then he can put a Berserk on it. I don't think he is going to do that now, because Aaron's still pretty high on life. So he's going to deal 3 points of damage. Aaron's going to drop to 12 here. And there's a pass. Ooh, that's a Chaos Orb. So Chaos Orb and Suchi. And a third card I cannot identify. Maybe you can. Is that a Disenchant, maybe? It's hard to see. Anyway, there's the attack for two first, so he's going to drop to 12. So that lion actually has dealt eight damage so far. That's kind of impressive. That is pretty good. There we see the Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip now? And if so, what is he? He needs to flip or else, you know, Dao has the scavenger folk. Oh, he's actually not going to flip. Interesting. I guess, I guess if Dao wants to sack the scavenger folk in response... Erwin can activate, so he doesn't need to. So if I was Dao, I would now just attack. Exactly with both of them, what else can you do? And now Erwin's going to pump. I, I Or Dao was going to pump with Pendlehaven. I think I would do Scavenger Folk. Yes, that's a good decision. I like this play by Dao. Because now he's kind of putting Erwin in, in a difficult spot. So he's going to take a damage from the city. And he is going to flip on the Scavenger Folk. And not on the Dragonfly. This is exactly what Dao wanted. That 1-1 one, one evasion, of course, is better. Still dealing another point of damage. So that means Aaron's going to drop to 10. And there's a pass. I wonder what kind of cards are there in hand on the side of Dao. We know he's got one Berserk. It looks like Dao changed his mind. Oh, he's asking. Sorry, sorry. I still had to play something out. And Aaron's being... Uh, 
Because being a friendly chap, like most of us are in old school, he's saying, okay, sure. Go to your second main and he's playing out a lot of elves. So some more pressure from the side of Dawa here. And all those one ones are really good because of that Pendlehaven on the side of Dawa. There's the attack for two, so he's going to drop to ten. What can he do here? Tapping for a white. Tapping some more. There's a fireball. And this is so unfortunate for Erwin. If he could have one extra land, he could double fireball. He could kill both creatures on the side of Erwin. He's not very successful. There's the attack. He can pump it now. That's exactly what he does. So that means Erwin's going to drop to eight. Oh, Erwin's going to drop. There's the berserk. That said, game over. There's the lethal play <laughs> Erwin offering him. This is a Broodje bitter ball, by the way, that he's making. It looks horrible, but it's pretty tasty. So if you're ever in the Netherlands, order a Broodje bitter ball. It's really nice. It also goes really well with beer, by the way. And, and of course, he's combining it with mayonnaise. That's what Dutch people do. We put mayonnaise on everything. Normal people combine it with uh, a little bit of custard, I guess. Uh, mustard. No, not custard. Mustard. Sorry, guys. Um, anyway, this was game number one. Now, both players are going to go into the sideboards. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll find out if Dawa can also win game number two and uh, steal this match. That would be a surprise for me. So uh, let's give these players a moment to sideboard. Game number two. Here we go. So Erwin on the play. I think he's taking another mulligan. He's very unfortunate. Yeah, he's taking another mulligan. So he's starting just with six. Cannot see that second card. I'm assuming it's a Mox. So he's got a Tundra and then a Mox, I think. Oh, a Black Lotus. Second the Lotus, Demonic Tutor. Is he going to look for Ancestral Recall? I mean, that makes sense, right? And Dao, all he can do now is wait. That's the thing when you're playing against these, these power decks. They can do insane, insane things. So here we see... Erwin shuffling up. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's looked up the Ancestral Recall. I mean, he's, he's taking a mulligan, so he's already starting with one card less. On the other hand, he's now sacked the Lotus, which also is costing him a card. So actually, an Ancestral Recall is not... It's still good, but it's not that good, if you know what I mean. Because he was already a card behind. I think we're going to see the Ancestral now. Yeah, Ancestral Recall. So, I mean, it still nets him, uh, you know, an extra card then. You know, because he loses a card because of the Lotus and he lost a card because of the Mulligan. So um, he's kind of even then because he also, of course, played the card itself. Anyway, it, it, I understand the play. It kind of helps him out. So here we see a green by Dawa. And um, I'm expecting a first turn play, hoping to see some Timberwolves. Ooh, just a pass. That's pretty bad if you're a green player and you don't have a turn one play. That's very good news for Ervin. There's a Savannah Lions in a pass. He does have a strip mine there. I wonder what he's going to do now. It's kind of hard to see the rest of the hand. There's a Pendlehaven. We see Giant Grove. There's Argovian Pixies as an option. We see a Berserk. We see an Ice Storm again. It would have been so sweet for Dao if he could have found a Lanawar Elves. Turn one and then turn two to that Ice Storm. And then the next turn do a strip mine. Really try to attack that mana base. But it's unfortunate. There's a Bolt. Yeah, and this is kind of... What I was expected to see from Erwin, remember, he is playing with bolts and with swords to plowshares. And it's always a very strong combination because you can use your bolts for the smaller stuff and the swords for the bigger stuff. It's really quite nice. There's the attack with the line, so he's going to drop to 18. And is he going to miss the land drop? It looks like he's past turn. So he's going to miss a land drop here. There's a strip mine, I believe, from Dawa. He could use the strip mine to play an Ice Storm, exactly, because he's got three mana now, playing an Ice Storm. And now that he's seen the Bolt, he's like, I don't like that. And he's taking care of the Red Source. And of course, um, you know, a part of this decision-making by Dao is also because Erwin already played out the Ancestral Recall, so that's nothing to be afraid of anymore. Now we see Dao drop to 13. He's got another Ice Storm. I would definitely play that other Ice Storm. Take care of the mana base. Playing Maze of If. This is perfect. There we see an Ice Storm. Okay, could this be a win for the green deck again? I know it's a, it's a bit premature. We're not there yet, but it's looking super good here for Dawa. 
And it's looking so bad for Erwin. So after kind of, you know, finding the Lotus Demonic Tutor into Ancestral Recall, he kind of had this idea that he would get back into this. But it's it's going south here for Erwin quite fast. This is really bad news for him. And Dawa having that double maze, he just needs to cast a creature, but does he have one? There it is, the Dragonfly 1-1 one, one Flyer keeping the, the uh, Pendlehaven open to pump it up. And there's just a pass, no mana for Ervin. It's looking really good for Dawa. Here I was expecting that Ervin would win this match easy. But here is the green player proving me wrong, attacking here. Remember, he's not there yet, of course, but still... Attacking, you could pump it up, pump him up, make the dragonfly 2-3. Only dealing one damage though, he's gonna do something else. And there is a tracker. That is pretty sweet. There is an island. Can he do something with the island? I don't think so really, he needs a white source. I see a time walk in hand, a counter spell of sorts to plowshares. He can't really do anything with just one island. He has to try to stay alive long enough. There's the strip on the island. Very good choice. I think there's a Mishra's factory in hand. He's gonna attack with both. If he's gonna block, does he have a giant grove for the tracker? Does he want to do that? So he's pumping it up, dealing four points of damage. Erwin dropping to 19. Okay, this is good news for him. He's got access to Swords to Plowshares now. And he's gonna read the tracker. Again, tracker really cool Dao to see you play this card. You don't see it often. I've played it in a few lists because it's so much fun. I've combined it with Meekstone. But never played it at a tournament. So it's really cool to see it in action. There we see a Swords. Interesting to do that uh, in his own turn. He could have waited, of course, after the pump with the Pendlehaven. But he's deciding not to, now passing turn. At least it stops the bleeding a little bit here for Erwin, but he's so far behind at the moment. Interesting to see what he's going to do now. He can attack again, of course. I mean, he can always use his mace to take it out of combat if he changes his mind, but I think he wants to play a, maybe a Giant Grove on her, killing the lion. So there's the block. Are we going to see the Giant Grove? There's the Giant Grove. Are we also going to see a Berserk, though? I believe he's got a Berserk in hand. No, no Berserk. Maybe that was then the script sprites instead of the Berserk. 1-1 one, one Flying Sprite. The only thing that Aaron is going for him is that he's still pretty high up in life. So that means time, right? Okay, now he can cast Time Walk, by the way, because I think I saw a Time Walk in hand earlier. Yeah, there's the Time Walk. Okay, so he's on 15. He's going to take a new turn. If he finds another land, he could get back. Ooh, there's a Soul Ring. This is getting interesting. I believe I saw another Swords in hand there. He can cast the Soul Ring. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. He's on 15. He can still get back into this. Playing a Savannah Lions. Okay, maybe that wasn't the Swords then. Maybe that was the Lions. But things are looking up here for Erwin again, at least a little bit. I wonder if Dao was going to attack just with everything. Animating the factory, it seems. Yeah, he's just going to put all his forces sideways here, I think. Attacking. And he can, of course, use the maze to take a, to protect a creature if the block is unfavorable. And he can, of course, pump his script sprite still with the Pendlehaven. It's a very interesting match so far. There's the block. He's putting it away, kind of indicating you want to trade, right? Right? I think if you're Dawa, you just want to use your maze here. The tracker is just an interesting creature. Maybe you want to keep it around. It looks like he's gonna use the maze here to take the tracker out of combat exactly. So the lion's returns doesn't take any damage. There's the pump with the pendle. That means four points of damage for Aaron. He's gonna to drop to eleven. There is another forest. 
Only one card in hand, no two cards in hand for Dawa. He's gonna play another creature, it seems. No, a crumble! Ooh, this is an important play! Crumbling the Soul Ring! This is such a good play by Dawa, this is so important. Remember, he only plays one crumble main, maybe he put more in after sideboarding. I think we see a Mox Pearl there in the hand of Ervin. That's not too shabby as well. I mean, if you're Ervin, you want to, of course, want it to go to five as quickly as possible and maybe like get one of his Sarah Angels because that would really help him to get back into the match. There is a Mox Pearl. What else does he have? We see a Counterspell in hand. That's, I mean, Counterspell is, is a really good card, but not good when you're behind and not good when you don't have two blue. This is something that we discuss in the deck deck. Playing multiple colors, a good stuff deck, these cards can be difficult sometimes to cast. And Aaron has been quite unlucky in this matchup so far. I have to give him that. He had to do a double mulligan in, uh, in game number one and game number two also he had that land issue. But that's, of course, part of the strength as well of the green deck playing with an artifact removal and land removal. What is he going to do here? Tapping? Interesting that he's not play, uh, tapping the Mox for that. Mox Pro only gives white. The Tundra, of course, gives two types of color, white and blue, but choosing to tap the Tundra nonetheless. Showing his hand. Ooh, Counterspell, double Sarah Angel. Ooh, if he still would have had the Soul Ring, he would have been so back into this match. Remember, he already played out the Black Lotus at the start of this game. It's one up for Dawa. Is it going to be 2-0 for Dawa? Aaron, of course, still on 12, though. Again, he can just attack with both. Use the maze. Interesting to see what, what is going to happen here. Tapping the one. Okay, there's another Script Sprite. Script Sprite's quite good, actually, because it has flying, and Aaron has no flying blockers. I really wonder if he's going to attack. I mean, if he does, Aaron can just animate the factory and the lines make blocks, and then, yeah, I think you only want to attack if you want to make a trade. If you don't want to make a trade, then just don't attack. Then keep your creatures home for now. Hey, he wants to make a trade, it seems. Attacking with both. Or does he have a giant growth in hand? That could be the case as well, of course. So here's the attack. There's, of course, the animate. Choosing to block the factory on factory. Pumping the factory. So taking that out of the equation. And putting a berserk on the tracker it seems that is interesting that means he's going to deal three points of damage to Ervin. he's going to drop to 10 it seems and he's going to pass the turn maybe this was a little bit too greedy from dawa i'm not sure there's another swords in hand here by Ervin, by the way just took it from the top of his library that's good news for Ervin. And he's just passing the turn, of course, just keeping his wide open to cast the swords. There's the attack. Gonna wait for the pump probably before he plays the swords to plowshares. Gonna pump it up to a 2-3. Oh, he's gonna take the damage. Does it mean I kind of missed it? Doesn't he have a swords to plowshares in hand? I guess he doesn't. I guess I made a mistake. Maybe it's a divine offering. That could be the case as well. Wow, that changes the situation. Another attack. Gonna put it to six. Ooh, only three more turns needed. Another creature on the board, a Lanawer Elves, and a pass turn. There is a Scrubland. Four mana. Remember, he's got two Sarah Angels in hand. If he can get to five, he can cast the Sarah Angel. But I think it's gonna be too late. He does have an Icy Manipulator in hand there. He could play it out, but then he has to tap out completely. And, and that's just, that's not a good option because then he takes the damage from the two ground creatures as well. So that, that would be a really bad decision here. I mean, Erwin needs some type of mana acceleration, but 
He's already lost Soaring, already played the Black Lotus. I, I, I think Dao is going to win this one, to be honest. There's the attack. Cannot block the Flyer, so he can animate the Factory. And now, of course, those mazes are just super good. Because Aaron's going to animate, pump and block the other Factory, probably. And then, in response, Dawa can use the Maze to save his Factory. And then he can still deal some damage with the Lanawar. There we see an activation. Block and pump, 3-3. Three, three. Now we're going to see the Maze action. That is a Swords to Plowshares in hand, right? Or is it not? So he's going to make the script sprites a 2-3. Maybe it's a Divine Offering. That could kind of look the same. Anyway, he's attacking for 3. That means Aaron's going to drop to 3 if he doesn't do anything. He's really in the tank here. He is dropping to 3. Wow. That is brutal. Next turn, Dawa can win this if nothing changes. There is that Swords to Plowshares. Okay, interesting. I would have expected it much sooner. But I guess if you're, if you're Ervin, you're kind of afraid of a Berserk and a Giant Grove, so maybe you're waiting for that to happen. I mean, either way, he's really a cat in a corner. And at a certain point, there are just no good choices left anymore. Has to pass turn, cannot find the land to play that Sarah Angel. This must be so frustrating for Aaron having two Sarahs in hand most of the game. There's the attack with both again. So he's going to animate. We're going to see the, the block and the pump. Then we're going to see the maze again. And are we going to see a giant growth? Is this the end of the road? Ooh, a counter. No, he doesn't have two blue, of course, to play a counter spell. It's the end of the road here. Dawa, you've won this one with 2-0. And, you know, maybe if you watch the deck deck, I predicted a walkover for Ervin. And here, man, I was proven absolutely wrong. So congratulations, Dawa, for winning this one. And, of course, a big thank you to both players, Dawa and Ervin, for playing here on Timmy Talks and, of course, playing here at the Raging Bull series. Thank you, guys. And that was the episode for today. Man, I really like uh, seeing the underdog actually win. Even though, Ervin, you had so much bad luck in this match. Just cr crazy, crazy bad luck. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this match, make sure to come back next week Friday. Because then I, then I have another episode from the Raging Bull series. Episode number 5. And then we're going to dive into the top 16. So it's going to be a top 16 match. We've got two very interesting and strong decks aligned for you for that match for next week friday so make sure to subscribe on this channel and ring that bell so you stay up to date to everything that happens right here on timmy talks talking about all that there are three things that you can do that are absolutely free and it really helps the channel move forward first one is like this video the second one is comment on this video and the third one is um, share this on your socials if you want to all these things are free and they really help the channel move forward and before you go, I would like to ask you to have a look at my Patreon page, patreon.com slash timmytalks. And there you can become a patron of Timmy Talks and you can also support the channel financially. You can help me keep Timmy Talks afloat and continue making these videos for you. So check it out. It already starts with $1 a month. And one of the great perks is you get your name in the end scroll at the end of every video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunkards? Somebody can see.